Welcome to the Structural Preparation Module Number 1 for the American Institute of Architects Structural Exam. I'm Dilip Khatri, and I'm pleased to introduce you to these modules that we've prepared for you to assist you in passing your structural exam for the AIA license. I've uh, been teaching structural engineering for over 20 years, and I'm a practicing structural engineer in Los Angeles. I've been teaching the AIA preparation modules for the past couple of years, and I decided to prepare a video version of this to assist many of you who are getting ready to uh, take your structural exam, and hopefully this will assist you towards preparing to pass your test. This is module one, which is tips and recommendations from me on getting yourself ready so you can pass the test. Many of you have taken exams in the past, and some of you find ta exam taking easier than others. Some of you find it to be a rather difficult process. And I thought I would share some tips, having gone through a fairly s long series of tests myself. And I thought I would share with you some of my practice tips on uh, preparing for your exam. So to give you a few notes, first of all, when you prepare to take a test, remember that your first goal on any exam, and specifically we're referring to the AIA structural exam, but your first goal is to pass. And I know that sounds rather fundamental, but a lot of you, when you prepare for a test, try to go through some kind of soul-searching experience that you want to learn more and you want to improve your skills and that's all wonderful, and I admire you for that. And it's good to try to prepare yourself for your career, but that's not the purpose of taking the exam. The purpose and the number one goal is to pass. After you pass, then you can expand your skills and you can go and learn more materials. Your first goal is to pass the test. How do we pass the test? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to set up a regular study schedule. It means that you have set in your mind that you're going to pass these modules over a certain period of time. The AIA exam is nine modules, out of which the structural is only a part of it. So those nine modules, you have a certain period of time. I think it's approximately five years to pass those five, nine modules. You don't want to take five years to pass nine modules. It ends up dragging it out way too long. You want to set a schedule to get all those modules done in two years or less. Because then you have the continuity of the information, the continuity of the training, and you don't lose the momentum. If you end up tagging five years to pass your nine modules, there's the danger that you may not pass all of the modules within the time frame and then you will lose your qualification and have to start all over again. So get it done quickly and set the schedule and set the priorities. So set up a study schedule. My advice is to set aside a minimum of two hours a week to prepare for the test. Two hours a week doesn't sound like a lot, but you would be surprised how people will just go in and take a test and not be prepared for it because they didn't bother to study for it. The other tip that I strongly advise is to study with a group. Find yourself a group of friends, I would say a minimum of three, and set a time aside and meet at a Starbucks coffee and turn it into a social session also. Have fun while you're studying. Nobody says that when you get together you have to immediately start looking at the books. But study with a group, because when you study with a group it takes the painful process of preparing for a test and reduces it down to something that can actually be enjoyable. So set a schedule. You're going to get this done in less than two years. Set aside two hours a week. Study with a group. Let's, think, let's talk about the test itself. The structural test is a series of multiple choice. The multiple choice problems are divided into two categories. There is what I call the actual problem solving, 
and then there's what we call, what I call question and answer, Q&A. Q&A is, the test is a series of questions. We're going to go over several sample of those questions in these modules. In the Q&A, they'll ask you questions about different types of structures, different types of buildings, different types of materials. In the problem solving, you're actually having to do math and solve a problem and come up with an answer. My suggestion to you is to do all of the Q&A first. So when you get the test, you do all the Q&A first because that requires actually the least amount of work. And you have a set period of time to pass the test. If you do the Q&A first and answer all of the questions that you can answer first, you've at least accomplished solving the easier problems first. The problem solving ones should be done second. You do not want to get tied up on a problem solving question and waste time because remember you have a limited amount of time. It is multiple choice. So what do you do with the third category of problems which is the ones where you don't have a clue what the answer is. You save that for last and yes you make what I call the educated guess because don't leave it blank. There's no penalty for having a wrong answer. As long as you're not being penalized for having a wrong answer, don't leave it blank. But don't dwell on it because you don't want to take the problems that you don't have the slightest answer, slightest clue of what the answer is and dwell on that. You want to dwell on the problems that you know how to solve and do those first. So when you get the exam, the first thing you do is you look at the test. So here we go. We have, you're taking the test and what a lot of people do is they start working right away. Here's what some folks do. They get the test and they immediately start solving problems. I don't want you to do that. That's a recipe for disaster. First thing you do, you relax, you look at the test, and you prioritize the problems or the questions. What does that mean? It means that you're going to go through that test and mentally you're going to classify those problems into three categories, A, B, and C. A problems are the most difficult. C problems are, quote, the easy or the ones that you know the answer to. And B is in between. I'll just say average. They're sort of difficult, but you know the answer to. So you classify your question and answer into three categories, A, B, and C. Which one do you do first? This is probably the most important exam tip that I can give anybody taking a test. You do all the C problems first. So what I do is I go through the test and I classify A, B, and C real quickly. Shouldn't take you more than a minute. You can write it down on your notes. And then you go back, you solve all the C problems first. So the order that you go in is C, B, A. You first do all the C problems, then you do the Bs, and you save the As for last because you may run out of time. And if you run out of time, you don't want to lose points for not doing the ones that you knew how to do first because you have a limited amount of time, so you have to use it efficiently. If you have a question that you feel you don't have a clue on, you just immediately put that in category A. So we're going to first prioritize the test into A, B, and C categories, and then we're going to proceed in priority CBA in order to finish the test on time. My third tip, I know you hear this all the time, practice, practice and practice. 
the best way to pass the test is to do practice exams. In your study groups, you get together, you practice the exams, you do different types of solutions, you share your solutions with your study group, and you go back and you do more practice. And you'll pass your test. And after you pass your test, you go on to the next module, and eventually you'll get your license. And then hopefully we'll have a chance to work together. Thank you all, and I wish you good luck on your exam.